Iran is one of the most complex challenges the United States faces for a variety of reasons. Strategically, this is a country that borders three of the most volatile regions in the world, as well as the uh, shipping lanes for the world's oil supplies. Uh, politically, it is the experiment in the Islamic world to blend Islamic democracy. And what happens with this experiment politically will impact not only Iran and its neighbors, but the wider Islamic world as well. The Iran Primer, Power, Politics, and U.S. Policy, is a unique volume. It draws not only on 50 experts from around the world, but it explores every possible aspect, military, the economy, U.S.-Iran relations, the opposition, in a way that is both comprehensive but also very concise. The authors include 50 experts from around the world, from major think tanks and universities. Uh, it includes almost as many Iranians as Western authors in an attempt to try to balance the perspective so that it's not just from an American point of view. We looked at 12 regions or countries that are deeply impacted by Iran, whether it's Iran and the Palestinians, Iran and the Persian Gulf countries, Iran and China and Russia, uh, Iran and two neighboring countries, Iraq and Afghanistan, Turkey, which is a NATO ally. So we look at it from the perspective of all the interested parties and what impact Iran, what happens in Iran will have on them as well. Iran has been a challenge for the United States since the 1979 revolution, but now we've reached a point where it is not just a political issue, a, a diplomatic conundrum, it's also becoming a security threat. Iran is more important and complex than either North Korea or Afghanistan because it holds these vast oil and gas reserves. It gives it enormous leverage over the international community because uh, the West needs for its own industries, its automobiles, access to those resources. But Iran is also vulnerable because it depends on that income and it can't isolate itself in the way North Korea can. It is very much a part of the international community and so sanctions do hurt it. Um, but it also has a little bit of leeway because it does have that financial cushion to absorb some of the sanctions. Iran's unusual political system makes it very difficult to deal with the outside world. It has two rival sectors of power. You have the traditional elected branches of government, a parliament and a president, but you have the Islamic equivalents as well that in many ways have more power. They are capable of vetoing legislation, reversing a parliamentary decision, and then on top you have a supreme leader who is effectively an infallible political pope. And so the president of the country is not the person with the last say on any given issue. And so these competing sources of power make it very difficult to understand who to deal with and who makes decisions. This book is rich enough for policy analysts, but also basic enough for college students. And we think that it provides enough information that even Iran specialists will learn a lot. Students will be particularly interested because it provides some of the very basics on the political structure. Iran's unique combination of a democratic system and an Islamic system. It looks at 12 different uh, topics on politics, both the system and the emerging opposition. Uh, military specialists will be interested because we look at the three branches of the military, the conventional military, the Revolutionary Guards, and the Basij, which is actually the largest because it involves so many volunteers. We look at the economy of Iran and the many different aspects, whether it's the important role of the bazaar, uh, the revolutionary economy, and how it's changed the way Iran does business with the world. Uh, we also look at the impact sanctions have had, the United States bi bilateral sanctions, four rounds of punitive United Nations sanctions, as well as uh, the financial sanctions that various international institutions have imposed, and in many ways have been the most effective in pressuring Iran. One of the most interesting parts of the book is looking at the two most dynamic sectors of Iranian society on many levels, not just politically. One is women and the second is youth. Iran's women have emerged because of education uh, and because of exposure to the internet and the outside world better off than ever before in terms of their ability to get jobs in any field. 
Uh, you have a, an Iranian woman who's won a Nobel Peace Prize for her human rights activity. Uh, and youth, again, have been very involved in the political scene, defining the political debate, pushing the envelope, getting out in the streets. Iran's revolution in 1979 was the most modern revolution ever undertaken because they used the video cassette and the facts to get across their message. The interesting thing is that 30 years later, it again is the great experiment for Twitter, for the internet, in finding new t political tools to get your message across, to communicate in ways that the government can't stop because the government has control of the media. It can ban newspapers. Television is state controlled. And the new tools have actually created mechanisms for young people, for women and others, to get their message out and to mobilize. Iran is one of the most mysterious countries in the world for most Americans. Relations were cut off in the aftermath of the 1979 U.S. Embassy takeover. And we've had very little contact with Iranians since then. And this was a time to try to inform Americans about many of the very basic facts on a wide range of issues. The United States faces an enormous challenge in dealing with Iran. We've never been able to deal with Iran at the same time they were interested in talking to us. We've always been on a different page at a different time. Uh, for the first time now, there is an interest by both sides to try to deal with each other. But of course, we're miles and miles apart in terms of a diplomatic compromise. The key issue is obviously Iran's nuclear program and the controversy over whether its peaceful energy program is secretly being subverted to produce a nuclear weapon or a nuclear weapon capability. But human rights is also an important issue. And now that the United States has imposed sanctions on Iran for human rights, that also expands the range of interests that the United States has in dealing with Iran in the in the months and years ahead. The book project also has an online component. We're putting all 50 chapters and 12 appendices at the end on the web at iranprimer.com. And anyone can get access to all this information through one-stop shopping.